Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you can join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today, we're going to begin the book of 2 John. I'm going to introduce it, and we're going to get started. 2 John, Introduction. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. These words of Paul from 1 Corinthians 10-12 could be a subtitle for 2 John, a brief letter from the Apostle John that stresses the importance of balancing truth and love. John's readers are walking in the truth, and John commends them for it. But he warns them to watch out for deceivers who deny the true humanity of Christ. John exhorts his readers to love God and one another and to obey God's commandments. But he warns them not to encourage false teachers in any way, for then they would be sharing in their evil work. Vital Statistics, Author, John the Apostle. Date written, probably between A.D. 85 and 90, from the city of Ephesus, about the same time as First John. Purpose, to emphasize truth and love among believers and to warn against false teachers. Themes, truth, love, and false teachers. Day 354, December 19th. Second John, Fellowship with Enemies. Overview. John's first letter was written to a group of believers in danger of following false teachers. His second letter is addressed to a chosen lady and to her children who are facing a similar hazardous situation. John wastes no words in making his point. If anyone comes to your meeting and does not teach the truth about Christ, don't invite that person into your home or give any kind of encouragement. Verse 10. Though John commends love as a necessary part of the Christian life, it must not sentimentally embrace those who willfully seek to destroy the truth. To do so would be to diminish the true love that Christians must have for one another. John's warning is stern, but he knows a letter is not the best place to elaborate. He promises to deal more fully with the problem when he makes a personal visit. Verses 1-6, to Living in Truth and Love Love means doing what God has commanded us, verse 6. Verses 7 to 11, learning to detect false teaching. Love means doing what God has commanded us, verse 6. Verses 12 and 13, looking for John's coming. Love means doing what God has commanded us, verse 6. Greetings. This letter is from John the Elder. I am writing to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in the truth as does everyone else who knows the truth, because the truth lives in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace, which comes from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, will continue to be with us who live in truth and love. Live in the truth. How happy I was to meet some of your children and find them living according to the truth, just as the Father commanded. I am writing to remind you, dear friends, that we should love one another. This is not a new commandment, but one we had from the beginning. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and he has commanded us to love one another, just as you heard from the beginning. I say this because many deceivers have gone out into the world. They deny that Jesus Christ came in a real body. Such a person is a deceiver and an antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked so hard to achieve. Be diligent so that you receive your full reward. Anyone who wanders away from this teaching has no relationship with God. But anyone who remains in the teaching of Christ has a relationship with both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to your meeting and does not teach the truth about Christ, don't invite that person into your home or give any kind of encouragement. Anyone who encourages such people becomes a partner in their evil work. Conclusion. I have much more to say to you, but I don't want to do it with paper and ink, for I hope to visit you soon and talk with you face to face. 
then our joy will be complete. Greetings from the children of your sister, chosen by God. My daily walk. The point of John's second letter is that love must be discerning. Love cannot be divorced from truth. God's love is not blind sentiment. It is just, truthful, and demanding. God's love motivated him to send his son to Calvary, but those who do not believe in the son who died for them are condemned. Calvary and condemnation are both aspects of love. The one represents love extended, the other signifies love rejected. How wise and discerning has your love been lately? Are you being too easy on yourself or other Christians in the name of love and acceptance? Are you silently condoning error because you have been unwilling to speak the truth in love? Ephesians 4.15 Check up on your love relationships today and make sure they're truly biblical, not merely sentimental. The fruit of our righteousness is obedience to God and love toward others. That is so true and something always to check ourselves on. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Have a great day and keep up the good work. And God bless. And I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, peace.